My attempt to build a piano or organ keyboard similar to what Matthias built, it's a diagram from his construction article. I've made all the white keys. These will be the lower portion of the black keys. They're the same height. And it's my intention to make the raised portion by gluing on a piece of walnut. So now I have to make a jig that will allow me to cut the notches in these white keys clear of the lower part of the black key and I want to do that on the table saw. Installed dado blade on the table saw, made up a little jig to hold this key. We clamp this in and accurately cut the beginning of these notches on both sides. And now I'm going to go along and remove this excess material, end up with the notch for the black keys. And now we have the notch for one of the black keys. All the white keys have been notched to clear the black keys. I just need to clean up these edges a little bit and then make the tops for the black keys out of walnut. All of these have been drilled for the hinge. The walnut that I wanted to use wasn't quite thick enough, so I laminated it on a piece of hardboard. When that's in the keyboard, you won't be able to see it anyway. Now I'm going to go to the disc sander and we're going to sand this flush. marking out quarter inch wide guidelines centered on these blocks so I can bevel these black keys to that quarter inch width on the top. That gives me a little more clearance in between. I've drawn two lines down the center of this key and now I want to bevel that from this point to that edge and from this point to this edge. I'm going to put that on the this sander. I'm going to use this as a handle because it gives me control for turning this. I'm going to sand to that line and then rotate that piece until that bevel matches up with that edge. I've taken short sections of quarter inch KNS tubing and pressed it into the hinge hole and now I'm going to sand those flush. After you sand these you're going to end up with a little burr in there. I take a brand new number 11 X-Acto blade and I just go around that edge and remove that burr. It doesn't take any pressure. Around the edge and remove the burr. 
The notches on these keys were all cut with the same setup on the table saw. So I'm relatively sure that the distance from the hinge to the notch is consistent amongst the white keys. I put these on one at a time and I test to make sure that these will all swing freely past each other. And I don't think that's hitting. These will all have a washer that will space the gap between the keys. So right now the, the edges are dragging on occasion. We try each one of these to make sure. Let's see, that one's a little bit too long. So I'll take that off. And I'll go back to the disc sander and I'll remove a little bit off of that end. And now we have good clearance on that. Try the next one. That's good. Next black key. And that one's a little bit too long. We just keep doing that until we get these all done. Now that all the black keys have been adjusted, through here and make sure that each one swings freely. Granted, these keys do not swing upwards, but relative to the white keys they do. And you can pick this up and check to make sure that they swing the other way. The next operation is to go in here and round over all these edges. I'll do that on the router table. That rounds over most of it. The rest of these edges will have to be done by hand. All of these keys were cut out on the underneath side to lighten the weight of the key. I took this first one, got a shape that I liked, and I copied it to each of these other keys. I cut it out on a scroll saw and then sanded it on the spindle sander. I have spacing washers between all the keys. All the edges have been rounded over. And they seem to move quite freely. Made a frame for the keyboard using Matthias's box joint jig. And these strips are covered with felt. This just keeps the keys from making a noise when they hit these stops. The hinge pin is supported on the end of the frame and goes through a couple of metal supports in the middle. And then there's a, a dust cover that covers the end of the keys. And all these slats, I have all these strips in here. They're about 3 16 of an inch thick. I cut these overlapping joints, rounded over the edges. And then I've allowed about 5 30 seconds of an inch for these to expand and contract, and that's a little bit too much. It allows these gaps to get too big. So what I'm gonna do, on one side, I'm gonna take a little piece of heat shrink tubing, stick it in there. That heat shrink tubing can be compressed, if need be, by the wood movement. Now I still have a bit of movement, but it's taken out about half of that. That looks better. I'm using a nylon spacer between each key.
And then there's no spacer when it comes through this metal support. We've got all the keys in. Those springs make a noise. We'll take these pieces of foam, and stick them down in alongside of those springs. The springs still work, but it dampens out that ringing noise. 